Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. Time for the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It is Saturday, the 9th of October, 2021. Hope your weekend is going well. Got a few things to talk about out there. So let's jump right in and take a look, shall we? Off the coast of the Carolinas, it is uh, Invest Area 92L that we're watching. 50% probability that this goes on to become uh, potentially a subtropical storm by later tonight into the overnight hours of tomorrow. The bottom line with this system, it's pretty spread out, and I can show you that here on the satellite imagery this afternoon. It's a large feature, and the energy is trying to concentrate around a low pressure center somewhere down here, but strong upper level winds coming up out of the south here are preventing that from happening. There's a little bit of what we call divergent flow, where the air is trying to at least spread out just a little bit. It comes up and spreads out, and we are getting some thunderstorms from that near the Gulf Stream area, just offshore from the North Carolina coast. This is producing some gusty winds, just rather inclement weather. Uh, not a fun beach weekend for sure for parts of North Carolina. And even the South Carolina beach is a little bit overcast down there. Pretty good threat of rip currents from this, just general squally conditions as I mentioned. Small craft definitely want to just kind of chill out this weekend. I know a lot of people like to head down to the banks to do some fishing, maybe go offshore to the Gulf Stream, but I don't know. I don't think I would want to do that uh, this particular weekend with this lurking offshore. In the eastern Pacific, we will be watching this with great interest over the next few days. Invest Area 91E forecast to become by the computer models and the National Hurricane Center pretty much suggesting this becomes a uh, storm and the guidance suggests it becomes a hurricane and it could impact anywhere from Puerto Vallarta up to Manzanillo, uh, somewhere in between. I don't think it'll be points <coughs> excuse me south from there as I was yesterday it's more to the north and northwest from that area from Puerto Vallarta northwest we'll just call it that so we will be watching that very closely and I will be going there in person I'll talk about that at the end of today's update but there's 91e gathering itself up in the eastern Pacific I also want to point this out it's a tropical wave a little piece of energy here Moving through the uh, Atlantic, down in the deep tropics, approaching the windward islands, but the strong upper level winds will also help to keep this in check. Those winds coming up out of the west and west-southwest, while the tropical wave generally moving along from east to west, running into that upper level shear, as we call it, and that will help to really preclude development. You can see all of these features nicely on the vorticity signature. There's 92L, and it does have a very well-defined low-level energy um, signature, the vorticity signatures there, the skeleton, if you will, but the rest of it is just hard for it to come together. You know, water temperatures are warm, there's plenty of energy, but the upper, le upper level winds are not going to allow this to do much more, but it has a short window where it could gather itself just enough. I'll show you that on the GFS here in just a few minutes. There's the tropical wave approaching the windward islands, and again, these features are still out there coming across the Atlantic. It's not like they just disappear. They usually don't develop in the tropical Atlantic. They typically wait to the Caribbean, maybe the Northwest Caribbean, or they go all the way across and then develop in the Eastern Pacific as part of other energy that comes off of either South America or just the way the wind comes through the Caribbean into the Southeast Pacific. You get a little bit of a jolt there, a little bit of a boost, and these systems can take off, and that's what's happening with 91E. Here's a close-up animation courtesy of the weathernerds.org site. All those little white speckles you see in there, that's lightning. So, yeah, if you're at Cape Fear, you're coming out of Cape Lookout, uh, or the inlets anyway, Hatteras, Oregon Inlet, you name it. Um, you, know, you come out of Topsail or Surf City, Jacksonville, the New River, and you want to head out into this, you know, more power to you. I wouldn't want to, so yes, you have to... Uh, understand that this is not a huge problem, it's not a, a big deal overall, but for the local interest out here, it is making for kind of a miserable weekend and an unsafe weekend, especially if you're in small craft and you want to head out to the Gulf Stream and do some fishing or whatever. Nope, not the weekend to do so for sure. Now looking at the modeling, it's very well represented uh, on the 12Z GFS. There it is right there, 92L. That's the 850 millibar area, 12Z today, and it captured it pretty well. That's, that's nice and spread out. It's kind of broad. But watch what happens here just over the next few hours as we put this into motion. Um, this is valid uh, this afternoon, so a couple hours ago, 
and this is coming up this evening and yes it does try ever so briefly to concentrate itself there just southeast of uh, Cape Lookout south southwest of Cape Hatteras uh, offshore of uh, Ocracoke and vicinity maybe maybe this gets upgraded we'll see what the weather service office out of Newport Moorhead City shows and how they communicate that with the National Hurricane Center uh, recon is out there checking it out they were uh, as indicated earlier in the tropical weather outlook so there is a small chance here that for a few hours anyway this becomes subtropical storm Wanda and that's just a classification scheme and I say scheme it makes it sound negative um, not every scheme is negative it's just a way to say look it's not quite as bundled and structurally the same as a typical tropical system it's got a few ingredients of a tropical storm and a few ingredients thrown in there of a subtropical or mid-latitude type storm system the wind field is generally more spread out the pressure field is not as defined and again it's just a classification system mainly for science but everybody knows about it and in fact they call it subtropical whatever <clears throat> so you know we have to reckon with it I guess but the bottom line in the overnight hours yes it could strengthen or organize itself a little bit better whatever way you want to look at it but look everything is generally spread out these pieces of energy around this one little common area here not all together bundled like what we're going to see over here for example with what will eventually be Hurricane Pamela in the Eastern Pacific so let's just scroll this on out over the next few days and uh, that's 96 hours finally by day five mostly clear across the western Atlantic the Caribbean and Gulf some of this wave energy tropical wave energy does end up kind of north of the greater Antilles and you gotta watch that some of these impulses may try to take off and become more than what we're seeing here but no real solid signs of that in the global models it's not until way on out I'm just gonna scroll this out to the two week time period that eventually the more favorable MJO gets into this part of the world and you get to develop this big old gyre down here let's take away all that scribbling I just did and just draw that in so you get that gyre that monsoon gyre the Central American gyre whatever you want to call it um, that comes later and again we're still only at the end of October it's not like it's the end of November and you know the temperatures are in the 30s and 40s up here we're still struggling to get strong fronts to come all the way down to clear things out even over the next couple of weeks so it might not look too um, busy now but later on I'm still thinking yes this, these are the signs that you look for going out into time and the GFS operational here and the ensembles beginning to sense that but we'll deal with that as it comes so this is the area we got to watch right here 91 E again Puerto Vallarta region right here up towards Manzanillo I'm sorry Mazatlan up here uh, to the northwest that's where this could come in and the guidance really starting to hone in on that over the next few days it develops nice and solid in the vorticity there 850 look at that that is an intense hurricane there uh, by Tuesday afternoon finally coming up into the region somewhere just south at least the GFS shows it of Mazatlan between there and Puerto Vallarta and then it just kind of disappears into the mountains and it's just the way the model doesn't see I mean there's a lot of rugged mountains through here and it's hard to model through that I suppose the way the resolution and the grid fields work that's all just part of how the model works but watch it pops out the other side uh, across the Rio Grande into Texas believe it or not so some of that energy might survive the trek and go across those mountains because it's going to get caught up in this big trough that itself is going to bring some severe weather to the Great Plains in the next few days and yes this could be a rainmaker and a weather event if you will for our friends in Texas now um, again alluding to this earlier I'm heading down there this will be my first intercept and field mission of a East Pacific system Brent Lynn one of our supporters and field work uh, geniuses he's fantastic to work with he and I are gonna go we're gonna head out starting Monday and I will talk about this in more detail tomorrow but I'm officially putting it out there that the field mission to Pacific Mexico is officially a go uh, we're gonna head out starting on Monday and we will be on scene in Mexico by Tuesday those details will go over more 
tomorrow, all right? But I at least wanted to lay that out there. So it's interesting the GFS is pretty strong, and it gets it in there, again, between Mazatlan and Puerto Vallarta. The Euro, not as strong. This is every 24 hours, by the way. The other, the GFS, I think, was every three hours or six hours or whatever it is. And so the Euro is close uh, to the same general location. It's more like right over Mazatlan, roughly, um, plus or minus a, you know, a couple tens of miles, uh, but not quite as strong as the GFS. And I will say the GFS has done really well lately at the intensity and just the overall pattern. And in this situation, it's not waffling. There's not one run of the GFS where Pamela to be is really strong, and then the next run, oh, not so much. There's none of this waffling, as we say. The GFS has been very consistent on developing a very strong hurricane. And I think that that's what we'll see. It just makes sense with the pattern. It'll get caught up into that southwesterly flow and accelerate towards the Mexican coastline. And so the folks down there, uh, again, from Mazatlan towards Puerto Vallarta, you could be dealing with quite an impactful event, and so will I, because I'm going to be there with my brand of reporting. Not going to be able to do anything live to speak of, not like we do in the States, but anyway, we'll cover that tomorrow. But yes, this is going to be a big deal, and the GFS, I think, painting an ugly picture there. This is going to make some uh, news headlines, especially if it were to come into Mazatlan proper. That's a pretty big population center, so something we definitely need to keep an eye on. Another thing to watch, this is coming up tomorrow. Tomer put, you know, makes a good point here. Normally, um, you know, we wouldn't see this because he says naturally it wouldn't be in October summer without severe weather making a return. I mean, you know, right? Very odd. Late season severe weather threat. This is for tomorrow. So Sunday, uh, this is the simulated radar that he has overlaid on top of this graphic with the enhanced area. Um, really genius work that, that Tomer Berg puts together. Um, so yes, pay attention. Storm Prediction Center, you know, your local weather service out there, and the people in this area, they're pretty aware. You know what I mean? They don't, oh, we didn't know. Even in October, they're going to get the word out. There's a good social media network out there, the television meteorologists. They all do a really good job, but I'm just here to just kind of remind you. And believe me, I'd love to go out there if I wasn't having to prep to get ready for going to Mexico. Um, but as you can see in the radar, it looks a lot, you know, just kind of eyeballing it, more like a line develops instead of individual supercells like we see in April and especially May. But the possibility of tornadic storms out there can't be ruled out. You folks in that region, uh, be mindful of that. We'll talk about it tomorrow because I'll be doing another update tomorrow, of course, and we can see what's happening as that system in the nation's midsection develops as well. All right? All right, well, that is it from me. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'm Mark Sutteth for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again some more tomorrow.